in Watkins, and she's playing. And Mary, when you play again, would you turn your piano a little louder? Because for some reason, it got softer, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know if it's my, my stuff or yours. I, I can't hear you. It's interesting. I don't know what's happened. Something went cattywampus. So let me see. Hang on. Talk again. Hello. Okay, it's okay. working better. Well, let's not worry. Let's say it'll just click in just when it's supposed to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so good morning, good morning, good morning. God's healing power is restoring and revitalizing our world this very moment. Welcome to Unity of San Leandro Sunday morning message and meditation. We are glad you've chosen to worship the God of your understanding with us this morning. Remember, unity is a positive path for spiritual living. We honor all paths to God and provide a philosophy that is spiritual, that's love-based, not based in fear. I'm Reverend Diana McDaniel, and I'm a unity minister, and I am here at home for us to continue to worship together. And we have an opening prayer, and I invite you to join me in that prayer. So we just breathe and breathe in that pure life of spirit and begin. There's only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives and in our affairs, God the good. There's only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good omnipotent. And so we just breathe that in and know that that one presence and one power is the very essence of us, that it breathes us, speaks us, thinks through us, loves through us. And for that, we are grateful. And we'll just simply say, Amen. We are here in California, and we are following our governor's orders. We are still actually sheltering in place as much as possible and still being cautious, still washing our hands for 20 seconds and, and wearing our masks and still being cautious even though the vaccines are here. So um, we are still continuing in our goal of cultivating calm and releasing anxiety. This morning, George McDaniel will be reading the Daily Word. The word is Hosanna. <laughs> Thank you, George. Good morning, Reverend. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday, and hope everybody had a great week. Uh, today is Sunday, March 28th, 2021. Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. See, I remember it. <laughs> the word is Hosanna. Guided by the divine presence within, I follow the path to spiritual freedom. I imagine Jesus' experience riding a young donkey through the gates of Jerusalem, seeing the waving palm branches, feeling the people's love, hope, and even their fear as they shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. His followers look to Jesus as the one who would free them from the bondage of Roman rule. Jesus, embracing his Christ nature, the spiritual identity he shares with all people, had accepted the greater mission of leading humankind to freedom from all bondage, all limitation, even freedom from death. Taking my inspiration from Jesus' example, I fearlessly embrace my Christ nature. Guided by the divine presence within, I follow the path to spiritual freedom. In the scripture for today, so they took the branches of palm trees 
and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. That scripture is found in John 12th chapter, 13th verse. Reverend? Thank you. Um, would you would you hand me that speaker that's over in that white chair? Yes. There is something going on with the sound system, and I am going to try something. <laughs> you know, it's uh, interesting how life is and how things change. And so, Mary, I'm going to ask you if you would play something for me. Just, just, to, just to see how the sound is. Maybe a little Jesus loves me. that Mary I appreciate it <laughs> we'll just uh, trust it's all gonna work well all right so our unity worldwide ministries provides us with a uh, provided us with a prayer once this pandemic started and you know it has been a year since we've been using this and there are hundreds of thousands maybe millions of people by now using this prayer around the world and we believe in the power of united prayer and so i invite you to listen and join me in this prayer so take a deep breath and and listen we know that god is a love that has no end and the power that knows no bounds God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears or anxieties, and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health peace of mind, and abundant love. And so we give thanks that we're together. And so we move into a time of meditation now where we tune into that infinite spirit of wisdom, that infinite spirit of love. And we know it's known by so many different names. Do we call it God or Goddess or Christ or Holy Spirit, Comforter, Allah, Brahma, Divine Mind, Divine Love. And so we tune into that infinite love and breathe and breathe in that pure life of spirit. And let's know and trust that it moves all through us, that the God's currents of healing love are in the midst of us, and we're in the midst of it. And so I invite you to open your hands like you're receiving a gift. Just be there knowing that we are still at the moment. Be still and know that I am God is the scripture. And so again we breathe and breathe in that pure life of spirit. And as we breathe, let's trust that we are in the midst of love and that love is in the midst of us. And we can see that love expanding. It never leaves us. It just gets larger and larger, moves beyond the walls of wherever you are, 
out into your community, our community, out into our world, and in the cosmos, all points north, south, east, and west, all points therein. And let's know that people can feel it, that they suddenly feel peace. They suddenly feel love. They suddenly feel comforted. And so we release all worries, let them go. And just give thanks for all the good that's happening. Again, we breathe, breathe in that pure life of spirit and allow it to move in and through every cell of our being, through every person, every sentient thing, all life. And if you have a prayer request, I invite you to bring it to mind now. Trusting in the goodness of God. Knowing that as you bring it to mind that something wonderful is happening in that situation. Something good. Our prayer is to let us have the eyes to see it. So there's nothing too large, nothing too small. And so for all the good, we'll just simply say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And I invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and leave us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So it is. Amen. Thank you, Mary. And um, Mary's going to play a song, and hopefully we can get this sound up so you can hear it. Um, and the song is, I am praying for you. Is that correct? I am praying for you. No, no, no. Say it again. For you, I am praying. There's something wrong with the speaker, either on this side or your side. I just don't know what it is. But go ahead and play, and let's see. Make it as loud as you can make it, Mary. <laughs> Thank you. I can always turn it down on this side.
Thank you. I could hear it. I hope everybody else could too. <laughs> it was beautiful. Thank you, Mary. We're glad you're back. Mary's computer was on the blink and had to uh, be taken care of. Somebody hacked into her computer. So we're glad you got it taken care of. Okay, good morning again. This morning, the affirmation is, spirit opens the way. You know, I was, uh, I like to use affirmations and, and I like to say, and this morning I want to say, I'm ready for a miracle. <laughs> I want a miracle of the music to work. <laughs> the sound, I'm ready for a miracle. I was with my daughter she bought a home, my oldest daughter, and uh, it's a new house. And we uh, we drove up, and her blinds, all the window coverings are in the house, and we were glad to see they were still there after the closing. And the blinds are just normal blinds, you know, just levelers. And so we looked at them and then we decided she wanted to close them as we were leaving the house. And we couldn't figure out how to do that. So she, so she just pulled it down. She said, well, it pulled down. I said, well, how do we get them up again? There was no string. You know how you have a string to pull up your blinds? And, and then we stood there for a while. She went off and did a few other things and I'm pondering, pondering, looking at the blinds. And then all of a sudden I decide I'm gonna she pushed them up. She, when she pulled them down, I, I decided just push them up. And they stayed. And I pushed them again. And they stayed. I didn't need a string. And I said, hey, Lori, they're new blinds. <laughs> you know, mine are so old. I still use a string and uh, to, the, to pull them up. And I thought, that's a miracle. <laughs> you could just push them up. They stay. You pull them down. And they would come down. This morning, I was sitting here, I picked up uh, this Bible, and this it was this piece of paper here, and earlier, and last night, and earlier today, I was thinking a about a particular scripture I wanted to use. Well, when I, I looked it up, and I didn't like the versions of the Bible that, the, uh, that came up on Google, and I'm just sitting here, waiting for the service, and I opened the Bible where this paper is and there it is it was what I wanted this is John 14 it's uh, Jesus speaking he says I have said these things to you while I am still with you but the advocate the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I'm coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. Now, I was thinking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Comforter. Some say the Holy Ghost. They say the Advocate, the Holy Spirit here. You know, and Jesus says when he leaves, there will be a Comforter who's here, who will be coming. But was that a miracle when I opened to that page and it was the exact scripture? It's even marked. Apparently, I've used it before, <laughs> you know. I was just real pleased about that. So this morning, I want us to think about kind of what we think of as miracles, what we consider miraculous, and to be open and receptive to the miraculous happening in our lives. Spirit opens the way. That's the affirmation. Once upon a time, a mouse looked through the crack in the wall to see the farmer and his wife open a package. And what food might this contain, the mouse wondered. He was 
devastated to discover it wasn't food, it was mousetrap. Oh my gosh. He went on a, a, a tour, tell all his friends, there's a mousetrap in the house, there's a mousetrap in the house. And the chicken clucked and scratched and raised her head and said, Mr. Mouse, I can tell you this is a grave concern to you, but it is no consequence to me. I cannot be bothered by it. And the mouse turned to the pig and told him, there's a mouse trap in the house. And the pig sympathized but said, I'm so very sorry, Mr. Mouse, but there is nothing I can do about it but pray. Be assured you're in my prayers. And the mouse turned to the cow and said, there's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap in the house. And the cow said, wow, Mr. Mouse, I'm sorry for you, but it's no skin off my nose. So the mouse returned to the house, head down, dejected, to face the farmer's mouse trap alone. Well, that very night, a sound was heard throughout the house like the sound of a mouse trap catching its prey. The farmer's wife rushed to see what was caught in the darkness. She did not see it was a venomous snake whose tail the trap had caught. The snake bit the farmer's wife. The farmer rushed her to the hospital and she returned home with a fever. Everyone knows that you treat a fever with fresh chicken soup. So the farmer took his hatchet to the farmyard for the soup's main in in ingredient. But his wife's sickness continued, so friends and neighbors came to sit with her around the clock to feed them the farmer butchered the pig. And the farmer's wife did not get well, she died. So many people came for her funeral. The farmer had the cow slaughtered to provide enough meat for all of them. The mouse looked upon it all from his crack in the wall with great sadness. So the next time you hear someone is facing a problem and think it doesn't concern you, remember, when one of us is threatened, we're all threatened. When one of us is threatened, we're all at risk. All are involved in this journey called life. And we must keep out an eye out for one another. I like that story. You know, the uh, we have had uh, some horrific experiences recently where we've had some Asian American women who were killed and shot down. We've had people in the grocery store just going to shop and they were killed and it was uh, it really makes my heart ache and I think we need to do something where we do not have the types of weapons that are used for war and so I'm looking and I'm ready for a miracle to occur in my life to stop white terrorism to stop systemic racism, for it to disappear. You know, when white supremacists feel justified in killing people, only a miraculous uprising in human decency will stop them. I will say that miracles do happen. You know, this is the beginning of what we call Holy Week. It's the last week of Lent and if you remember, we had an assignment where we were to, uh, if you chose to do it, to take the 40 days to not complain, criticize the fast from being cynical. It has not been an easy task because I catch myself and I have to start and remember. We were to review our day to journal and to allow ourselves to grow spiritually. We still have one more week, so we can continue to do that. Holy Week is symbolic of Jesus' last week alive on the planet. He knew he'd be killed. And that scripture, he's telling them, I mean, somebody's coming, the Holy Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, will be with you. And he gave his disciples warnings and instructions. He even said the Comforter would come. I can imagine the pain his community felt when he was killed. Just like our community has felt when we had the people at Mother Emanuel shot to death. We have to be in a place of allowing spirit to open the way, to trust that spirit will open the way for miracles to occur.
One day in October 1947, the director of the local bank in Marksville, Louisiana, he woke up to find that hundreds of fish had fallen from the sky, landing in his backyard. People walking to work that day were struck by fish falling out of the sky. And there's an account of the incident by a researcher for the state's wildlife and fisheries department. And it found its way into the annals of scientific anomalies. Phenomena waiting to be understood. Fish falls have been reported in Ethiopia and other parts of the world. I can remember when I was a kid going to school one day and there were worms everywhere. On the, on the sidewalks, I mean, I, you couldn't walk without stepping on these little worms. They were on the street, on the sidewalk, on the grass. It was, where did they come from? It was like thousands of them. In the case of the fish, they, they, they thought maybe they were swept up in a water spout and moved. We, we don't know. They, scientists are disposed to assume a physical explanation. I was watching on television a, a program where there was a scientist who was trying to uh, explain, and they, they broadcast it, the miracles, some of the miracles that have happened in the Bible, like the, the Red Sea parting, and it was uh, the Sea of Reeds, not Red Sea, and they have discovered that there was wind, and maybe, they're guessing maybe every 50 years, the wind, the weather changes it, and there's an area that becomes dry enough to walk through the water to go from one side of a bank to the other side they could go through the Red Sea. So there are things that appear to be miracles. I was thinking even the, the vaccine is like a miracle. It has happened very quickly. Miracles do happen. Now one that we know of uh, prior to Jesus riding into Jerusalem is when his friend Lazarus was dying. And Mary and Martha reached out to Jesus and you have to come. Lazarus is dying. Jesus waits three days to go. And, and he then raises him from the dead. And apparently he was dead because they said his body stinketh. So but he was able to raise his friend from the dead. Many people had heard about Jesus' miracles like stilling the storm, walking on water, opening the eyes of the blind, restoring a withered arm, healing a cripple of 38 years. We, we all heard about the, him feeding the crowd of 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. And when it came time to have some money to pay the taxes, he told the disciples, go, go catch a fish and get the coin out of the fish's mouth. So we believe that Jesus understood the truth, that there is no lack. Miracles happen, whether they're scientifically explained or not. Miracles take many forms. Like I said, the vaccines that we have now, you could say, are a miracle. They certainly got here fast. The power of God, the power of wisdom is contacted through prayer. Spirit opens the way where there seems to be no way. Spirit opens the way where there seems to be none. Miraculous things happen. Let me share a story. Mama and I got stuck in Dallas, the Dallas airport, due to an electric storm. They closed down the airports, and it was quite awful. We had to wait in Austin on the airplane for about three hours. And then they flew us back to Dallas, and by the time we got to Dallas, it was so late, the airplane, airport was closed. There were not even people to help her get off the airplane. The pilot found the wheelchair, and we got her off the plane. While we were on the plane, we had to call, uh, we thought, thank God, to call Jerry. Jerry found us, this is my daughter, she found us a hotel room. 
I think George said, make sure you find a hotel room to stay in tonight. But we had, so we did have a hotel room, which was very difficult for the, her to find. And we had a hotel room that was dry. In that particular hotel, many of the rooms were flooded. But ours was dry. We had a suite, no less. It was the only place they had in the building. I was on the phone that evening working to get us another flight out. We had two first class seats. I was only able to get, Mama says I'm not flying anything with first class. So we, uh, we were able to get her a seat on one flight. Her flight was in the morning. The flight I had was going to be in the evening, not first class. <laughs> Remember, the creative spirit in you and in me is greater than any of our believed personal limitations. And Mama was saying to herself during this whole thing, spirit opens the way. She has a way of just sitting there very quietly and whispering. So let me explain the miracle. I scheduled her on a flight for the morning, first class. I'd be leaving later that night. We go together to the airport because I'm not going to let her go by herself. Mom was in her 90s, you know. So we go together to the airport. We're sitting by ourselves. There's nobody else around there. No, no other seats, just the two of us not too far away from the ticket counter and and we're just talking and a man walks up to us and he's in some sort of uh, uniform where apparently he works for the airline he walks up and starts to talk to us and he asks where we're going and what we're doing and why we're sitting there <laughs> so we explained the whole situation to him and and then he just started talking to us and he said well he said don't go anywhere he says i'll be back so he comes back and he said, he said, now follow me. He says, and don't talk. He says, you just, just do what I do and do what I ask you to do. And, <laughs> and so we, we, we say, okay. And um, he puts me on the plane with mama. We didn't wave the man over. We didn't talk to him. He came over to talk to us. He just walked over to us and mama and I decided we would call him an angel. He put me on the plane. We got to West Palm Beach the same time. Miracles happen. In a daily word from 2006, I found this out. Just love it. Listen to this. Let me find a, the good copy. Okay. It reads, this, is, this was the affirmation, God is my guide, my comfort, and my strength. Comforter. God is my guide, my comfort, and my strength. This was the message for that day. A wise woman once offered this comfort. Imagine your life as a staircase. Each step is a part of your journey. Some steps are smooth and unobstructed. Some steps have cracks or loose stones. Now picture a strong and secure handrail along each step of the staircase. That handrail represents the strength and security we have in God. Along our journey through life, God is with us. We meet each day with assurance because God is ever present as our guide, our comfort, and our strength in every situation. We are supported by God's assuring presence throughout our journey in life. God never fails us. No matter what the circumstance may be, God is within us, guiding, comforting, and strengthening us. God is surrounding us, uplifting, and steadying us. And from the scripture they used that day, Psalm 138.3, On the day I called, you answered me, you increased my strength of soul. So some steps are smooth and unobstructed, it says. Some steps have cracks or loose stones. And picture a strong, secure handrail alongside. Another time, this is a story by 
about the Italian diver Enzo Mallorca. And he was diving in uh, an Italian sea. And he felt something patting him on the back. And he turned around. He saw it was a dolphin, which he understood did not want to play, but expressed something. He said the dolphin dived and Enzo followed. He said at a depth of 12 meters trapped in a the net, there was another dolphin. After managing with his wife to release it, as the two dolphins emerged, they emitted an almost human cry. Dolphins can be held underwater for up to 10 minutes and then drown. The trapped dolphin was a female who soon gave birth. The male dolphin circled him and standing in front of Enzo touched his cheek like giving him a kiss, a gesture of gratitude. Enzo finished telling this story by saying, quote, until man learns to respect and communicate with the animal world, he will never be able to know his true role on this earth. I want to add, until man, till humans learn to respect and communicate with each other and all sentient beings, we will never be able to know our true role on this earth. Our role has to do with recognizing we are one with each other one with all life, one with the white supremacists, and one with the Asian American, one with the, each one of us, male, female. You know, we're like all related to one another. It's one big family. There's all kinds of abuse though that happens in families. And I'm just so distraught with those murders of the, the women and the, Asian American women, I, I've heard that in Puerto Rico, many, many women are being murdered. The abuse from the stress of the, whatever the excuse is of the pandemic, that many women are being hurt. The people in that Boulder grocery store, the George Floyds of the world, the Breonna Taylors of the world, protesters are saying, stop Asian hate when I think they should be saying, stop white terrorism. How do you fight that? George was just telling me this morning that in his hometown, his father's hometown, there was a murder in many years ago. What, when, when the 40s or something like that? 30s? Uh, 1871. Oh, 1871. That there was a, a, a white it, sheriff it was that was- 1869, a white sheriff was gunned down a white sheriff was gunned down in 1869 because he favored because he was protecting somebody black. Yeah. So I was like, Phew. you know, unity teaches that we are spiritual beings having a human experience in our work. Our two main goals are to play this instrument of life well, to gain mastery of our existence and to attain Christ consciousness, to love, to move from sense consciousness to Christ consciousness. And overall, humanity has a long way to go. But let's see it, that it can happen quicker, just like this vaccine showed up quicker, you know? We are individualized expressions of God and it's incumbent upon each one of us to behold the magnificence in each other, the call forth the good and dwelling each one of us. We say we are in the express business. So today, be in the space of God. Stay connected to your source. Stay connected to everyone. You take this last week again to not criticize and complain and to be cynical, but to, to switch that around and begin to see as Valerie Kaur, K-A-U-R, said in her book, See No Stranger. She suggests that we practice seeing everyone as a family member. She says in, in her mind when she's walking down the street and she sees people, she says, quote, you are a part of me I do not yet know. You are a part of me I do not yet know. And when she's overwhelmed, she asks, 
what is my role in this moment? What is my role in this moment? I remember I have only to shine my light in my corner of the sky. So our grand purpose is to be like Jesus, to express our Christ potential. This purpose is not one given by some external God that's outside of us, but it's a God that is knows only of oneness and is active within us. And as each person wakes up to the reality of oneness, the Christ potential, then he or she begins to choose the grand purposes of realizing and expressing this Christ potential. So I'm saying wake up. <laughs> wake up. We must establish our I am identity with the divine mind and stop empowering and arguing for our egos. So we know that this is Palm Sunday the beginning of Holy Week. And it's symbolic of the day Jesus chose to enter Jerusalem to fulfill a prophecy from the Old Testament. And some say it was the week that changed the world. So let it be the week that changes our world now. We know that Jesus caused trouble in the minds of many people, who is probably why he was crucified. He had a tough week. Sometimes we have a tough week, but we want to be in a place of trusting that something good is going to happen and that we want to be receptive and open to seeing the miracles, to knowing that spirit opens the way. This ride into Jerusalem that Jesus made is your story and it's my story. Jerusalem represents that peace of God that's within you and the potential peace on earth, the peace that passes all understanding, where we all love one another, where we all get along, where we all allow each other to live. This awareness of your own inner divinity opens out a way for God's power to work through you and me. We are individualized expressions of God and we each should know that, that we're in the express business. So again, be in the space of God, stay connected to your source, stay connected to each other. Miracles require a state of mind that's ready to accept and handle miracles. Your miracle is on its way. Our miracle is on its way. And so that, my friends, is all I want to say about that today. Have a wonderful Holy Week, and we will be again with you on Easter. And that's all I have to say about that. Okay, this is uh, the time that we accept love offerings, so I'm going to invite you to um, go to unitysanleandro.org and find the donate button, and then you can... Uh, graciously give and we will graciously accept. <laughs> Thank you. It goes directly to Unity Church's account. So we are appreciate that. For our ninth announcements, we have Mastermind at, uh, on Wednesday at uh, 6.30. You can find that. You can go to the coffee. Oh, no, it's not the coffee cup, is it? No, you can look at it on our website, unitysanleandro.org. We also have uh, had our meeting last week and we will have that available to you. We'll send it out in an e-zine. It's a recording of the meeting, so even though maybe you didn't show up, you can get to see what happened and hear what happened. It's a great meeting. All right. So as we go forth, let's just be in a place of knowing that the light of God surrounds us, and the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us, that wherever we are, God is and all is well.
that part. Let this night joyous sound take each moment, live each moment in peace eternally. Have a wonderful week.